Hello and welcome to Stats Comprehensive, my name is Ken Gowdy and this is the first in a series of videos in which I show you how to go about dismantling your saxophone in order to give it a deep clean and to change the oil. Now let me start by saying as a disclaimer, I am not a saxophone repair person and in fact this is the first time that I've ever done it. So these detailed videos will be from the perspective of somebody doing it for the first time. So if you, like myself, are thinking about doing it for the first time, then I will show you all of the steps that you need to know, all of the pitfalls that you may encounter. And in this video, which is an introduction, I will answer some of those questions that you may have in the back of your mind such as what is a deep clean as opposed to a full overhaul? Why do you need to give your saxophone a deep clean? How often should you give your saxophone a deep clean? What tools will you need for the process? How are you gonna organize all of the pieces when you take them off the saxophone? And uh, lastly, I will go through the whole process of dismantling the neck, giving it a deep clean, oiling it, and putting it back together. So let's get started. So the first question we will address is what is a deep clean and an oil change? When you give your saxophone a deep clean, what you are going to do is disassemble the saxophone. You're gonna take out all of the pivot screws and hinge rods and take off all of the keys. You're gonna clean everything, clean all of the keys, get all of that oil and grease off them. You're gonna clean the main body of the saxophone. Then you're gonna grease all of the parts that need greasing, such as where metal rubs against metal. And then you're going to reassemble the saxophone. Now this is different than giving your saxophone to a technician for them to do an overhaul or a full overhaul because they will do something more to the saxophone. For instance, they will continue with the deep clean but would also take out any dents from the body of the saxophone, straighten the saxophone if the saxophone is bent. Uh, they will take off all of the corks and felts and replace them. And then they will repad some or all of the pads plus some other services. Here is a list of uh, some of the things that a professional a service technician would do. Now obviously there are some good technicians and some not so good. So you wanna get yourself a good technician if you're gonna send your saxophone off to get a complete overhaul. Now some technicians will charge a fixed rate, some will charge by the hour. So if your saxophone is in bad condition, so keys are stuck, etc. If you get somebody who charges by the hour, then obviously that's gonna cost you a lot more than getting a fixed rate. I did ask my local shop how much would it cost me to get my saxophone uh, overhauled and I live in the UK and they told me £270 and that's not with repadding. If I were to get it repadded as well then it would cost me over £300 to get that full uh, overhaul. So give me your saxophone a deep clean will keep your saxophone in a good condition so that when you finally give your saxophone over for a complete overhaul then obviously it will cost you hopefully less money. The next question we want to address is why should we give our saxophones a deep clean and changed oil? Well your saxophone is a finely tuned instrument and if you want it to continue to be in that state then you're going to have to maintain it. You should be doing your usual cleaning routine so every time you play it you should swab it out with swabs to make sure it's nice and clean and all of that moisture that's inside of it you take out. You might want to use maybe a cotton bud or a Q-tip and try and clean in those hard to get areas ever so often. But if that's all that you do in order to maintain your saxophone, then within two or three years, you would find that there is a lot of buildup of grime, especially around the tone holes and around the springs, meaning that your saxophone is ready for a deep clean. However, giving your saxophone a deep clean is not the main issue. Obviously, if you leave it as it is and uh, over the years, what's going to happen is going to cause your pads to deteriorate and you're going to uh, shorten the life of the pads. But what is more important is what's happening to the keys. Your keys are held onto the saxophone by pivot screws and by hinge rods. And these are all oiled and greased. Now after two or three years of using it, the oil within the keys and where metal rubs against metal will begin to dry out. Now, if it dries out, then what's gonna happen? You could get rust developing, and if rust develops, then little bits of metal will flake off and jam up the mechanism, and so that the keys will begin to move slowly, or a key may get stuck to a hinge rod. And even if that doesn't happen, the oil within the, the key barrel will begin to turn black. 
and that black is very abrasive and it will begin to wear away the inside of the keys. So you really don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that you give it a good clean out. Obviously this may happen to saxophones that have been laying around and nobody's been playing it. Um, but when you think about the inside of the key is a softer material than the hinge rod, then obviously it's the inside of the key that's going to be wearing away. The next question we'll answer is if you're going to give your saxophone a deep clean, how often should you do it? Now you will have different views by different technicians. Some technicians will tell you that you should do it every year. Others will say every two years. I did watch one video which kind of said that you don't really need to give it a deep clean, just keep on playing it. If it plays well, then that's fine. And then as soon as something bad happens, send it to the technician and the technician will deal with it. If you watch these videos of mine, then you'll see uh, the condition of my saxophone. I've had my saxophone now for two and a half years. And if you look at it, when I start cleaning it and look at the, uh, the, the, the condition of the oil, you will see that my saxophone is not really that bad. So I could have left a deep clean for a few more years later. Um, but again, if you really want to get your saxophone in top condition, then obviously you're going to have to do it regularly. The next question we'll address is what is the risk of you doing a deep clean yourself? Now, if you send your saxophone to a technician for them to give it a deep clean, then if anything goes wrong, they've got the tools and they've got the knowledge to fix it. If you're doing it yourself and something goes wrong, then obviously you're in a bit of a problem. So if you're doing a deep clean and you, you lose a screw or you snap a spring, then obviously that's gonna be a bit difficult for you to fix. But obviously all you need to do is just put everything in a bag and send it to the technician and get the technician to fix it. So it's not that of a big deal. The things that could happen, like I said, the springs become very rusty and brittle and they could snap if you put too much pressure on it. There are lots of parts on the saxophone. So when you take out all these hinge rods and screws, you might lose them if you don't organize it very well. Obviously taking off the screws can be difficult because they could be stuck there. So you've got to use your screwdriver wisely. You don't want to stab yourself in the hand or slip and scrape the saxophone. The springs are very sharp. You don't want to stab yourself with the springs on the saxophone. I think the main issue would be that once you've done the deep clean, you've ordered and you put it back together, because you've taken the saxophone apart, then uh, the alignment may not be correct. So when you begin to play it, it doesn't sound as it did before. But again, if that's the case, just send it to a technician and get them to fix it. When I took my saxophone apart, there were certain things I had to deal with. For instance, a felt of one of the keys fell off. That's not a problem, you could just stick it back on. The main problem would be is where did that felt come from? So if you didn't see the felt fall off, you're gonna to have to work out where did that felt come from, what key. Uh, you may be able to find out because there might be a residue of glue on the key. That's how I knew where that felt was supposed to go. Um, when you take your saxophone apart, you may find that bits of corks are loose and because you've been playing for some time, they would have fallen off anyway. But when you take it apart, you'll see that maybe some of the corks are loose. So you're going to have to um, glue them back on. Um, I had one felt that moved. So over time of playing the saxophone, it kind of moved up the key. So I had to take it off and then glue it back in the place where it was supposed to be one piece of cork was falling off which I glued back and like I said one um, one bit of felt uh, came off which I had to glue back but that was the only issue that I had. Um, before I actually started doing this uh, deep clean I did go through the saxophone with a screwdriver just to make sure that all of the screws could be unloosed. Um, if there was any that was too tight and I couldn't unloose it, then maybe I wouldn't have started this process. But I went through all of the, the, the screws and hinge rods before dismantling the saxophone. And I realized that I could actually turn all of those screws and hinge rods. And that gave me confidence to go through this process. There were different sized pivot screws and hinge rods that would need to be removed. So you need different sized screwdrivers. A 1.5 for the small hinge rods and rollers, possibly other places on the saxophone. A 2.5 up to a 3 for larger pivot screws and hinge rods. You may also want a longer screwdriver in this size for those hard to reach pivot screws. You'll need a size 4 for the larger screws on the key guards. 
However, since saxophones are made differently, you may find that different sized screwdrivers fit better. Obviously, there are better expensive screwdrivers and cheap ones. If your saxophone has been serviced recently, then a cheap screwdriver will do the job. I bought cheap screwdrivers and it worked well on my saxophone apart from one large screw on a key guard that needed a better screwdriver. However, if the screws are likely to be stuck, then you'll need a tougher, more expensive screwdriver that will not break or flex with a better grip. When taking out the hinge rods, you can use your fingers, but the longer hinge rods might be more difficult to slide out, in which case you will need some pliers. I have seen various types of pliers used, such as parallel pliers, round nose pliers, any smooth jaw pliers such as duck bill or curved pliers. You should never use serrated jaw pliers like ordinary household pliers, as these will scratch or mar the surface of the hinge rods, making it difficult for the keys to rotate on them. You will also need a spring hook for unhooking the springs. A damp cloth can be used for cleaning, but for stronger cleaning, you can use naphtha or lighter fluid. The advantage is that it's quick drying. One touch dispensers are good for dispensing the naphtha fluid as they only require one hand to use them. You will need gloves to protect from the naphtha fluid and always work in a well ventilated room. You will need pipe cleaners to clean out the key barrels and saxophone pulse. You may find that the pipe cleaners do not fit in every hole so don't force it. You can use q-tips or cotton buds for cleaning stubborn grime. Wire cutters can be used to cut off the dirty parts of the pipe cleaners. Paper towels are used for wiping down and you should have something to collect the waste. For washing the saxophone you will need different sized soft brushes for the body and the neck of the saxophone. When it comes to oil there are three types, low, medium and high viscosity which refers to how runny the oil is. Low viscosity oil is thin and runny and is not used on a saxophone unless it's used to thin thicker oil. Some will use medium viscosity oil on the hinge rods and high viscosity on the pivot screws. Others will use high on everything. Some will use some form of grease on the pivot screws such as cork grease or silicone grease or lithium grease. Silicone grease is good where metal is in contact with plastic or rubber, whereas lithium grease is good for metal on metal contact, but not good where there's contact with rubber or plastic. Others will use engine oil or regular household oil. Obviously some lubricants will be better than others and some more thicker lubricants may slow down the movement of the keys. I use Yamaha heavy oil for the hinge rods and all purpose grease on the pivot screws and other areas such as the fork connectors. When you remove the pivot screws and hinge rods, you will need to organize them so that you can put them back in the same place from which they were taken, especially since there are different sizes and you don't want to get them mixed up. Some will loosen the pivot screws just enough to remove the key and then screw back in the pivot screw. Or remove the hinge rod and immediately put it back in the saxophone so that the hinge rods and the pivot screws stay in the saxophone. This is a good idea as the pivot screws and hinge rods will not get lost or mixed up. However, there is a problem if you want to clean them since you would have to remove them anyway to clean them and the hole from which it came out of. Some will remove the pivot screws and hinge rods and place them on a paper towel and write on the paper where they came from. This would work, but if you accidentally move the paper towel, the screws could roll out of place. Some will use hinge or pivot screw boards or assembly boards, which are boards with drilled holes in it for placing the pivot screws and hinge rods. The holes are labeled so they cannot be confused. These can be expensive to buy, so you might want to make your own. This is one that I made out of cardboard with the pictures of the keys on it and each pivot screw and hinge rods are numbered. I also took a pill organizer and added more dividers and an information sheet so I know where to put the screws and hinge rods. The numbers correspond to the assembly board I made. So what I do is to take the pivot screws and hinge rods off the saxophone and put them in the organizer. I can then spray them with degreaser to get the grease off them and clean them and then once cleaned I can put them in the assembly board. My saxophone has more pivot screws than other saxophones which have a lot more hinge rods. I have 32 pivot screws and 16 hinge rods including the roller hinge rods. Now let's deep clean the saxophone neck which will be similar to how I will deep clean the saxophone but on a smaller scale. Use a small screwdriver, the 1.5 to unscrew the hinge rod. Because there is a spring, it might make taking out the hinge rod difficult with the fingers, so you might need to use an appropriate pliers. If you grab the end of the hinge rod with the slit as shown, then you will not crush the end. Do not use a lot of force.
If you spray the hinge rod with greaser, it will be easy to clean. I use Zep Heavy Duty Citrus to greaser. Now clean the upper octave key with either a damp cloth or for stronger cleaning use Q-tips or paper towels dipped in naphtha. Here I'm using lighter fluid as an alternative to naphtha, but a damp cloth is equally good for cleaning the pads. You may want to check that the screw holding the spring is tightened. Now we turn our attention to the main body of the neck. Use the pipe cleaner dipped in naphtha to clean out the octave pip. Make sure that there are no hairs left in the pip from the pipe cleaner. Now we clean the inside of the neck with cold water and soap. Try not to get the cork wet by holding the neck at certain angles so the water will run down. If you bend the brush to the same shape as the neck, it will clean further inside the neck. A small brush can then be used to clean the rest of the inside of the neck. Then rinse it out and dry it and swab it out. If you need a deeper clean inside of the neck, then block up the small hole and the octave pip and prop it up so that the neck does not fall down and pour vinegar inside of the neck and leave it for about 30 minutes. 
Personally, I've never used vinegar to clean up my neck because I usually swab out my neck. The only disadvantage of using vinegar is that it may make the neck smell of vinegar, but you can put drops of lemon in it to make it smell better, so I've been told. The last thing to do is to reassemble the neck. Put a little grease in the slot in the neck where the spring will go and reassemble it. It might be difficult to push the hinge rod back in since the spring is pushing the octave key out but if you line up the hole correctly the hinge rod should slide in. If it doesn't go in it's because the key is not aligned correctly but is at an angle. The way we clean the neck is similar to how we're going to clean the saxophone. So in the next video, we will disassemble the saxophone.